Today, we're going to take a look at my workflow that drastically improved how fast I could create social posts and display ads. We'll be using Figma and Illustrator to do the heavy lifting. Here are six different frames that are pretty common sizes. Of course, you can have as many or as little as you want, so feel free to create your own frames. The next thing we're going to do is create our component set. So we'll create a new frame. It doesn't really matter how large or small, but then we're going to add each text layer that we want. So I already know that I want to have a category header that in our case could be something like summer sales. We'll have a long headline and this is for those larger documents and a short headline. This will be for any of those small display ads. And then we will have body copy and of course a CTA. The next thing we're going to do is turn these each into a component. To do that, all we need to do is come up here and select create multiple components. So you'll see each one is selected. Now, each one of these that have copy, what we're going to do is come in here and add auto layout. And you can do that by just clicking on each one of these. But we're going to leave the CTA alone and you'll see why in a bit. The next thing you're going to do is come and I'm going to hit command or control click into the object itself and I'm going to have it fill container. Now I'm going to do this for each one. And what that will be able to do is we'll be able to set a, a width limit from this auto layout that no matter what size, the way we lay it out, the text will fall into the next line. So we can just come in here and I'll just do a random number. It doesn't really matter for right now because we'll be readjusting in our template. I'm going to go over to my assets panel and you'll see local components frame one. Now, if this becomes a global library, then we're going to want this to be organized. So I'm going to change this to social asset template. And then the next thing we're going to do is zoom back out and we're just going to work on this first one just to get the layout and template structure set up. We're going to pull down each one of these. We don't actually need our short headline, so I'm going to leave that there for now, but I'm going to put this in the order that I want it to display and we don't have to have this perfectly aligned where we want it to go quite yet, but uh, just move it over. Just put it, I'm putting it in the center. I'm going to change the text style with the library that I've previously set up. If you're interested in how I set up Figma libraries for branding, like and subscribe. I'll be releasing more videos like this in the near future. Now that we got our text adjusted, we're going to bring in our logo because of course that's an important part of our social aspect. And we're going to just generally lay this out. Of course, I want this category to be a little bit further away. And now the next thing we're going to do is click on both of these and align them. And then we're going to select auto layout. I like to have my layouts in multiples of eight. And if eight doesn't work, then I go down to four. The next thing we'll do is figure out our spacing along with that. You'll see that if we select all three of these, we can't just create an auto layout. So I just think it's easy enough to click on that one. And then we'll drag this in below the body. This allows us to have equal spacing between the two and uh, we can play around with a little bigger. I think that looks just fine for now. Next thing we're going to do is create a rectangle and we're going to send it to the back, select our categories or text components, and then create another auto layout. 
sent it to the front. So we'll send it to the back so we can see our logo. Now I'm going to resize this all the way down to the bottom. And then I'm going to also click bottom and top right there. And then also I'm going to put this in the center. The other thing I will do is add more padding up top so we can keep this relatively centered to where that is. Now you'll notice that that spacing's off. We can either bring that over there to match this or we can change it right here. Now I like to keep my multiples of eight, so I'm going to put it at 64 instead. Now that we're done with this, I'm going to click on the background square and go to white. We will be able to see this a little bit later once we put our illustration in. Let's make this CTA a little more button like. So I should have done this earlier, but here we are. So we're going to click on the CTA and we're going to create an auto layout. Now you'll see that that setting right there is based off the auto layout and we want it to be hug hug. So when we come over to our assets panel and drag out a new CTA, uh, we can come and create a rectangle, put it behind our text layer, select both of them and create a new auto layout. Now, when we adjust this, you'll see that it grows with it. We're going to come in here and adjust our frame size and do whatever we want with adding. I'm also just to finish it off, going to add a solid drop shadow down below. And then we can also turn this into a component as well. Additionally, we need to add our text style back to this. So I will do that quickly. And also I need to change the color to our CTA orange. And I actually like the contrast between the black and the orange there. So I'm going to come back down here and we are just going to simply drag this in there and delete that one. You'll see the nice thing about what we're doing is this component keeps this centered. So there's very minimal uh, layout work once we actually have our copy starting to go in there. Now we're going to create a frame for our illustration to go into. I'm just going to rename this illustration template. And I've already created an illustration and I'm just going to simply copy and paste it in. We can get rid of this background fill just like that. And you can see my lovely little flower. I'm going to create a component and you'll see as we come into our assets that our new illustration is right there. Now, of course, we have a white background and I'm going to just resize this really quick and add a new rectangle. Whoops, this got in our auto layout, but no worries. We can just drag it out and we'll resize this. And we can even come in here and change it to our lovely gradient. So you'll see that our template is complete and now we can start resizing each one of our components to meet our different frame sizes. We'll start by selecting all of our objects and copying and pasting them into a different frame. And we are going to drag that on down to the bottom. I'm not going to worry about that frame for the moment. I want to resize my gradient rectangle rather than, rather than that. And that will be our background. We will adjust this. Now you'll, you'll see that this isn't in, or our logo is not in our auto layout. So I'm going to add that right there. And because this is a lot closer, we can just simply have that come over here and we will make it the full length. If we need to, we can adjust any of our padding as well to make sure that there's enough room. 
Um, you'll notice that we are having a little too much padding right there. So I'm going to bring that up there and bring that down here or just simply type it in. And I think that fixes that. Now, if we want to make this illustration a little bigger, we can come in here and resize it. Um, of course, I do want to have my frame clipping the content, which is not currently happening. So we can come back up to our illustration and we'll click in here and click center center. This should allow us now to create a frame that centers our illustration. Just like that. If we do want to move it down, we might have to do a little bit of masking or we can bring this frame up and just simply cover it. Either way, I think it's uh, looking really nice. And just like that, I've finagled each one of these templates into the corresponding frame size. Now, something to note really quick is if you come over to any of these, really, you'll just want to make sure that you have your fill and hug. That way, when you type in anything, it will automatically go to the edge of what you defined. And let's say you resize that, you'll see that it will include that padding in it. After all that work, I'm sure you have a good idea of what's about to happen. But of course, now it's time to show off where the real power of this setup is. Make sure you have all of your copy ready. I'm going to click in and start filling it in. Now, if we zoom out, you can see just how this template works. You can see that everything's been put into the correct place. It's automatically dropping down into one line. And really, all you might have to do is come in and make little adjustments to where the illustrations are. No having to go into multiple files, nothing like that. If you want to learn more how Figma for branding works, like and subscribe. Thanks for watching and stay creative.